Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and very good morning to our respected speaker Dr. Tavamaran Kanisen, the Honorable Professor Technologies Dr. Muhammad Azlan Muhammad Ishaq, the Deputy Rector of Economic Affairs Division UiTM Police Branch, webinar writing series committee member and also to all participant. Welcome to webinar writing series this is development journey for PhD and master student. I am Muhammad Akmal Roslani, a moderator for this webinar session. Thank you to all participants who are willing to join our webinar session today. So we would like to apologize for the delay in starting the session due to some technical problems. All right, before we proceed, I would like to raise an attention from all of the participants on several matters. First, it is appreciated if you could mute your microphone throughout the session in order to avoid any accidental interruption during the talk. Next, if you do have any question for the speaker, you may interrupt by clicking the hands up menu and I will let you to voice out the question. Or you may also type your questions in the chat box and I will read up at the end of the session. Finally, the link for the certificate of participation will be shared at the end of the webinar session. So please stay with us until the end. All right, before we proceed to our main agenda, now I would like to call upon the Honorable Professor Technologist Dr. Muhammad Azlan Muhammad Isaac, the Deputy Rector of Economic Affairs Division, UITM Police Branch for his opening speech. Please welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you hear me? Yes, Prof. Okay, okay. And very good morning to all of you. First of all, I would like to welcome to all of our respected speakers, Dr. Tawamaran Kanisen, committee members, participants, and ladies and gentlemen. Alhamdulillah, thank you Allah, and with his blessed, we have this opportunity to gather here in this webinar. I am pleased to welcome you to the thesis development journey for PhD and master's students organized by Postgraduate Unit, Academic Affairs and Publication and Excellent Unit, RICAN, University of Mimara Police. Ladies and gentlemen, Alhamdulillah, I'm proud to say that this webinar provides a platform for universities to expand knowledge and expertise in the area of research in PhD dissertation and writing high impact publications. Through this webinar, students are able to increase the visibility of research through publications and also boost the skill for PhD maneuver. This benefits the university to achieve this vision mission and objective of the university. Furthermore, this webinar has the potential to gather the interest and participation of many to be excellent synergy and integrity. I'm sure this program helps the university for winning the high impact of research through a knowledge sharing cohesive research ecosystem, as well as to achieve the KPI and PI of the university. So I wish every single person here today will benefit from this webinar regardless of their position on this campus. Again, I would like to welcome you to the thesis development journey for PhD and master students. And thank you, especially to our respected speakers, committee members, and all lecturers and students of UIT and police for your contributions in, and time in attending this program. With that, I now declare that the thesis development journey for PhD and master students is open. And may you have a fruitful session. Thank you and have a good day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alright, thank you Professor Technologies Dr. Muhammad Azlan Muhammad Isaac for the opening speech. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we start, I would like to have your pleasure cooperation in order to open and to turn on the camera for a photo session. And your cooperation is highly appreciated. So we will have our first photo session before we start. So we are, we are waiting for the others to turn on their camera. So one, two, three. All right, next. One, two, three. All right, next. One, two, three. Okay, once again, one, two, three. And last one, two, three. All right, thank you for everyone. All right, 
So ladies and gentlemen, the main objective of this webinar session actually are to help a new postgraduate student and also a staff who will become a student later on. So this webinar focuses on producing master's and PhD level proposal and also thesis by following a unique 11 steps formulation in order to improve the overall efficiency of the developmental effort to avoid graduating after time. So concurrently, this webinar also paved way to precisely extract high impact journals right from the beginning of a study program. So our webinar today is honored with the presence of Dr. Tavamaran Kanisen. It is my pleasure to introduce our speaker to all of you. So Dr. Tavamaran completed his PhD degree in engineering in less than three years, majoring in the integration of fourth generation long-term evolution LTE and optical communications. Thereafter, he solely founded Proofreading by a UK PhD, an academic consulting firm that provides services across many verticals. The firm has grown from having a single founder to currently employing over 102 consultants all over the globe and currently serve corporates and universities in over 34 countries, including UK, Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and also many more. In his personal research journey, Dr. Tavamaran has an exciting publication record and awards with more than 60 publications, mostly published in Q1 journals and law acceptance rate conferences. Most notably, he had garnered over 96,000 academic followers in his vibrant Facebook page and group, which completely focuses on academic and career paradigms. Proofreading by a UK PhD currently serves as the official editorial for many universities, governmental and also private organizations. Apart from his entrepreneurship journey, he, he was also with the prestigious Aston Institute of Photonic Technologies, Birmingham, UK, as a postdoctoral researcher and work in European FP7 project, FOXC and e EPSRC, UNLOC, focusing on all optical orthogonal Frequency division multiplexing, AOOFDM, and coherent OOFDM, COOFDM. In order to gain further industrial insights, he joined Telecom Malaysia as a technical manager, focusing on radio over fiber system projects and directly managed 24 members of technical staff. To date, Dr. Tavamaran has managed to secure over RM23.7 million or USD 5.4 million worth of research grants and won numerous awards, namely BPH Successful People in Malaysia, Best Papers and Researcher of the Year Award. Without further ado, we would like to welcome Dr. Tavamaran Kanesan to deliver his speech. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Akmal. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Prof. Azlan, for having me today. And uh, thank you, Dr. Ayn and the entire organizing committee for making this happen. I know you guys worked very hard for this. So thank you very much from my side. Uh, and uh, thanks for all the participants for actually uh, you know, extending their time to be here. Um, and I'm very sure it's going to be a very fruitful session to all of you. I can promise that. We have very good uh, information uh, in hand today. So I'm going to share with you all. Let me just quickly uh, start by sharing my screen. Oh, uh, uh, Dr. Ayn, uh, you need to give me permission to uh, share screen. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Faiz, can you allow Dr. Tawafa to share the screen? Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, so here we go. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Faiz and uh, rest of the organizing committee again. Fabulous job by you guys. Um, so, okay, so to all the participants, um, this is an informal session, so nothing formal here. So, um, you can always, um, um, ask your question as we go, uh, as what, uh, the organizing committee advice, keep, please keep your mic muted all the time because it will interrupt, uh, the session. Uh, but if you have any questions at all, please feel, feel free to ask. The more you ask the merrier the session is going to be because we're all going to learn from each other. Okay, so it's not just going to be one way. It's going to be discussion. It's going to be uh, questions, Q&A as we go so that we can make the entire session more interesting. If it's just one way, it's going to be very boring and we have very good numbers today so we can learn from each other as well. Okay, so don't feel shy. 
Uh, and if you are doing anything else, I know we have some academicians with us today. We have uh, um, a lot of students. Um, put aside everything that you want to do, okay, or everything that you're doing now, uh, your work, your meeting, your Lazada shopping, whatever it is, put it aside. Uh, give your unparalleled attention here today. I will tell you it's going to be worth your two hours. Okay. All right. So, and keep your mic all muted at all times. Um, Okay, so um, this is um, my first talk actually for UITM this year. Um, um, I, this talk was already completed in the first quarter for this year, so I, I actually planned out uh, actually. Uh, okay, all right, thank you. So um, I, I planned out one talk per, per quarter, so we were four quarters, I planned out for four talks. Uh, but then I was uh, I got completely packed up in the first six uh, five months actually until May until uh, right before Raya. So me and Dr. Ayn discuss and so on. That's why we have back to back. So today and tomorrow, so that we can finish the first quarter and second quarter talk. That means today is going to be on thesis. Tomorrow is going to be on publication, which is a very good thing because whatever you learn today, you will understand it's all about thesis. A bit on publication. Tomorrow you're going to focus more on publication, lesser on thesis. So you're going to learn both within two days time so your mind will be very fresh with knowledge okay uh, and then follow up on that uh, we're going to learn systematic review in the coming uh, um, one of uh, let me see when when is it um uitm okay 29 august is going to be your third talk so that is going to focus on systematic review and finally um november 18 november is going to be uh, on the final talk uh, which is going to be a, hopefully a mapping process on how you can actually extract journals from thesis. This is very important, not only for academics, for students as well. If you're going to make a career out of research, out of academics, if you if you at all aim to become an academician, publication is the only way that is going to make you move forward. Okay, it's going to bring you forward. If you, you know, if you're looking at promotion, if you're looking at growth, if you're looking at grants and so on, Publication is the only factor that actually makes you. It's going to mold you into whoever you're going to be. All right. So all this give a lot of emphasis, a lot of uh, focus on publication. And why I starting off from thesis? Because thesis is the best point for you to extract a lot of papers. So that's what we're going to focus on today, how to develop a good thesis and concurrently, what kind of publication you can actually start planning way in at once. Don't need to wait until last minute. All right, so that's why today we're going to start with thesis development journey for PhD and masters. The focus is entirely postgraduate, definitely. So um, I'm not going to go through this. I think uh, the introduction was already fantastic. So I'm going to skip this. I'm going to go straight into this. So this is the reason that I am here. Okay, enabling me to give all these free talks around Malaysia to make sure that we all move in the same direction. Uh, that's why we call this as our CSR effort. CSR effort in the sense that how can we give back to the community? That means to the students, to the academicians, and so on. The only way that I can give back is through knowledge sharing. Knowledge sharing from my wide experience of working with various people from various subject areas. A lot of things that I've learned along the way for this past seven, eight years. Uh, so that's what I'm going to share today. So uh, uh, we are proofing by UK PhD. Uh, so this is our currently our current our current official proofing at MOU in progress. As a matter of fact. We are working towards an MOU with UITM. Hopefully, it'll be um, um, it'll be over soon. Uh, it'll become official soon, uh, and then we are the only ISO 9001 2015 certified academic consulting firm in Malaysia, and one of the few in the world. We are also endorsed by SFEP, also known as CFEP in the UK, and HRDF as well. And this is our presence so far. Uh, we are also not only in Asia. We are also present in uh, Arab countries, Middle East, uh, Europe, and most recently, a lot of South America. A lot of uh, clients from uh, Peru, Chile, they are really cropping up on research as well, All right? Um, and this is our document count so far, and that is that is what we do as an organization. Uh, so let's forget this word. Let's, let's look at where the knowledge today is coming from, the knowledge base, so you can know what are the areas we're going to focus on. So today we are going to look at thesis, a bit on publication, slightly on thesis to journal. This one will be more on tomorrow. We're going to look at viva preparation as well, which is very important. And we're going to look at certain perspective of language. So I'm going to share the knowledge that I've gained throughout these years, not only from my own PhD, not only from my own postdoc, but from other people's PhD journey, publication journey, and so on. All right, so this is our portfolio so far in terms of publication. How experienced are we? 
In terms of publication, well, this is the portfolio that defines our experience. I need to share this beforehand so that you know that whatever I'm talking is based on facts and figures. Uh, on um, uh, scaling up on that, these are some of the most important papers that I have achieved over the years. All right. Uh, I have to share these four papers. Um, okay, so I'm um, sorry, there's someone cannot hear. No, Ramadan cannot hear. Asia Said can hear. Is every uh, everyone else having any problem with their sound? So you all can keep the chat box open, yeah? So you can always respond and so on. So sound is good. So I think uh, everything is clear so far. So probably, uh, no, Ramadan, you need to configure your, your headset. All right, so let's see, uh, probably the, the problem is with your hardware, so have a look at that, all right? So, okay, coming back to this, um, I am sharing these four important papers so that you can have this as sample for you to go through later when you're writing these kind of papers. Why this particularly these four papers? So these, these, these four are our, our rec record-breaking papers, all right? These are the four record-breaking papers that I always uh, share with people. Why? Because these are locally written papers. So we always have that fear, uh, which is normal being Asian. When we look at Caucasian from UK, from the US and from the Japan and so on. I mean, not Japan, not Caucasian, Asian. But when we look at developed countries, we think that, okay, only these guys can write these papers. I don't think I have that ability to write. No, that is wrong. That is entirely wrong. Um, coming from, from, from a humble town in, in Malaysia and I went all the way to UK and and managed to publish impact factor of 11.7. I worked with prominent people in the world and so on. Uh, that is because we know that nothing can stop us. We can go wherever we want to go, as long as we put the effort in and we have the right knowledge and right resources. So these are some of those examples as well. So we have papers from, uh, this is from UTM, Renewable Energy, uh, Sustainable Energy Reviews. This is a paper ranked number one out of 44. So I had the pleasure of working on this paper, impact factor 14.982. This is another paper from UPM, ranked number 3 out of 144, impact factor 12.5. This is ranked number 5 out of 125, impact factor 10.3. This one, you know this paper, lah, Dr. Harold's paper, ranked 18 out of 274, impact factor 9.297. So these are notable parameters. Another important parameter that you have to observe is, these are all review papers. Okay, all of these are review papers. So... We can put away the perception that we have to always collect data, then only I can write paper, we can put that away. So today I'm going to share with you also when you can actually start writing these review papers and you know get into uh, whether Scopus or, or, or um, Web of Science, ISI, lah, whether ISI, I always call it ISI. I've been trained since the days of ISI, not Web of Science. Uh, so ISI and so on. You don't need to wait until you get your data, whether quality, quantity, experimental, medical data, whatever, you don't need to wait until then. If you have the right idea, you know what to review, whether conceptual framework, narrative review, systematic review, scoping review, Cochrane review, so many different types of review. You can just jump into it, start exploring. So that's why I'm going to share these four papers with all of you today uh, in my Telegram group. You can, not, not this, this, this two, but I'm going to share the rest of the four papers, which you will see later, for you to look at examples from my local guys, how they actually made it. So then you won't have that gap. You won't, you can easily bridge that gap. You can tell that, hey, this guy is from UPA, UTM. This guy is from UPM. If this guy can do, just right next door, I also can do. You know, you don't need to look at people from Oxford, Cambridge, Stanford. That is very far from us. So we look at our local guys who could make it and why we can't. So we can bridge that gap easily. All right? So that's why I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this. this uh, I'm talking about these papers today. And this is also uh, my own paper, as I said. So... Um, I, I, I have personally explored research with uh, prominent figures. So this paper was my paper for some time ago, from some time ago, when I explored review papers first with, uh, along with my colleagues. This was impact factor 11.39 uh, long ago. Uh, very good work. And this was a collaborative papers with um, Aston when I was at Aston, but at that, that point of time I was already in uh, Telecom Malaysia uh, with University in Prague, Northumbria, uh, University College London, UCL, University of Edinburgh, and also University of Oxford. So this is one of my primary papers that I've written with Oxford University as well. And after that, I also, read a few, I wrote, I also wrote a few papers with Georgia Tech, Atlanta as well. So um, what I would like to encourage is nothing can stop us from going as long as we have the ideas and the techniques to do it. Okay, all right. So um, let's move forward. So now for all of you, 
Uh, I need 100% participation. We have 194, so deducting the committee, we have about 195, 190 easily. Uh, I need all of you to focus, give your unparalleled attention. If your friends, probably with the change of links and so on, if they couldn't join, please share the links with them. Ask them to come and join. We're just getting started. The engine is just getting warmed up. Uh, still not too late. Make sure you remind them to come and join. And all of you participate actively. Respond to the queries, respond to the question, ask questions, don't feel shy. The essence of learning, continuous learning is to ask questions. Don't feel shy, don't have the fear, so that you can always open up and learn. All right? Okay, now coming to uh, my free Facebook classes. So these are the resources that I've created for the past two years and uh, three months now. Okay, so we have more than, I have more than 110 classes now. Why did I came up with this? This is to help out uh, PhD students, academicians, like I said, our CSR part, to move forward. What is actually stopping them? What is actually uh, uh, sort of uh, blocking them to progress forward? So I found out these are the major issues. Then what I did, I came up with classes. Facebook is the best platform because it's free and I can reach out to whoever is interested to come and join. Um, so, and the best part is I can create a playlist and I've already placed all the resources on Facebook. So from the audience today, from all the groups today, I mean, for all the participants today, how many of you here have actually attended my classes on Facebook? How many of you have not, have not attended? Because then I can share where you can go and uh, watch these videos. Please do respond in the chat box. How many of you have attended? How many of you have not attended? Okay, all right. Okay, so we have some attended before. A few times, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for many times. <clears throat> okay. Very good, very responsive class. I love it. Okay, fantastic. So, we have a mix. I think many have not attended actually because in recent time, uh, Facebook is sort of uh, reducing the reach. <clears throat> okay, reducing the reach so that people like us can actually pay for ad rather than getting all these uh, uh, free resources going. So they want to pay more. All right. So uh, that's why the reach is much lower. That's why I'm sharing through this way so that you guys can go and watch and learn uh, all the classes. So I'm going to share with you very quickly. So we have, uh, these are the top performing classes for thesis and proposal classes. Finding Research Gap, Problem Statement Writing, Chapter 1 Writing, Writing PhD Research Proposal. And then for journal, we've got Separately Systematic Literature Review, Finding Journal for Publication, Step-by-Step -step Review Paper Writing, How to Read a Journal, and so on. So I'm going to show you um, where you can actually um, look for the papers. Just one moment. Facebook not loading. Okay, finally loaded. All right. So, okay, so this is, uh, uh, this is on Facebook. So um, if you guys um, need the link to my page, here is the, here is the link. Let me share very quickly. Um, okay, so this is the Facebook page. I'm sharing in the chat box. You can have a, you can click on it. So this is the page. Proofreading by UK PhD. So this is where I live and breathe most of the time. So as soon as you reach here, um, you can go to um, events. Okay, so this will show you all the upcoming classes. So if you click this events button here. So these are all the upcoming classes. So this month, in the month of June, I am accelerating proposal writing. Okay, these are all free classes. Huh? So I'm not simply going live every day and talk crap and so on. No, these are actual uh, content-based classes where... Um, we can, I, I sort of always talk to people, a lot of students, so they say, this is my problem, this is my problem, this is my problem, my time planning is off, I don't know how to plan and so on. So I came up with certain classes on time planning, proposal defense by December 2022, how to actually make that happen. I'm going to share a time plan and time scale and so on. 20th of June, I'm sharing on a chapter one template, okay, how to actually complete a chapter one uh, in a very good manner. And then also, uh, 29 June, I'm going to share on specifically how to write review papers. So tomorrow we're going to talk very general in terms of high impact uh, paper, but this 29th of June is specifically on review paper writing. Why I have these classes UITM and I have this Facebook live classes because 
not all my uh, followers have the pleasure of going through universities. Okay, some of them are not from Malaysia, actually many of them. So they want all these classes, you know, some of them are from third world countries where they cannot afford to uh, um, have talks or they cannot afford to uh, attend workshop. They, they have very little financial ab ability. So um, sometimes I feel very bad from them, especially from 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 uh, from um, um, uh, third world countries, from African continent and so on. They really uh, find it hard to have the resources that we have or the financial uh, ability to attend. So what I do is my best, I just try to share with them also, whatever knowledge that I have, okay? Because education, um, everything is not about monetary value, all right? So on that note, these are specific classes I create. How can you um, uh, request for your own classes? I will tell you at the end of the class. So stay until the end. I'll give you the opportunity. If you have any specific problem that you want solution, you can always request. At the end of the class, I'll let you know how to request. And then I'll download all the requests. Then I'll make a consensus, a statistical consensus. And then I'll start organizing the classes for month of July, August, and so on. So this is only for June. All right. So if you guys are interested, these are the, um, let me get you the links. Ah, here. Okay, so these are the upcoming classes. These are the links for you to go and register if you're interested. You can just click and register. Okay, how about all the... Okay, how... Okay, if I... Then some people will ask me, if I if I register, uh, do I get to attend directly? Do I get notification? Sometimes Facebook won't give you notification, unfortunately. As I say, they're very cheeky nowadays. So what you can do, very simple, just click here and then click follow. Okay, when you click follow, the follow settings here, you can select favorites. So you'll see post higher in your feed so that when I go live, you'll be notified. So that's the simplest thing you can do. Lah. Just click this button, click follow settings, and then you can click follow and then click favorites. All right. Next thing, let's go to videos. Okay. These are all the previous resources that you can go and attend free class. As a matter of fact, you don't need to pay for very basic knowledge based workshop. All right. I've already given most of the resources for free. So that's why uh, 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 actually a lot of students don't, a lot of students in Malaysia, they actually uh, don't really attend a lot of workshop thanks to these, these classes. They're actually attending here now because everything is already made available, most of the resources, most of the knowledge, all right? So if you just scroll down like this one, I did this a couple of days ago, I think three, two or three days ago on problem state, problem statement in seven steps. How to write problem statement in seven simple steps. I've already summarized that. I've already created a template based on that. How to download the templates and so on, I'll also share with you today. And if you scroll down further, these are all the playlists. You can go right down here. Free writing tutorials by Dr. Tawa. 110 videos here. Just click see all. All right. So you can see starting a PhD proposal, five methods to find research gap, designing questionnaire instrument, literature review databases, PhD after time can you sustain, uh, PhD strategies for part-time students, systematic literature review, uh, finding journal for publication and so on and so forth. So there are many different classes here. Even for chapter one, there are many classes, introduction writing, background writing, problem statement writing, this is objectives from problem statement, how do you extract, how do you create uh, ROs uh, and then so on and so forth. Okay, so qualitative class, theoretical framework, conceptual framework, uh, 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 25 tips for best PhD thesis, Prisma 2020 also is being described here and so on and so forth. So if you guys are interested, these are the, this is the direct link to all the classes, okay? You can set it as favorite. In your free time, you can go and watch, okay? So those are the resources. Um, and then this is where you can go and get rest of the tutorials that I share on daily basis, videos that I share, I share and also all the templates. Most importantly is the Telegram group. I, I know some of you are probably in the Telegram group already. Uh, but for those who are not there yet, I'll share with you why it's important to join. Here are all the links for um, our Facebook group, Effective Academic Writing, Facebook page, Telegram group, and so on, and YouTube, and so on. So I'm going to share with you the links. Um, all right, there you go. Okay, so why Telegram group is important before, before I start this class, because during this class, it will be important that you are in the Telegram group. Okay, so let me explain why. This is the Telegram group. Okay, that's the first link I given and then YouTube and then TikTok and then Facebook page. This uh, uh, Telegram is very good because I do need to uh, share cloud all the time. Otherwise, how can you download the documents, right? If I post on Facebook, Facebook doesn't show the post to everyone, although I have like 100,000 followers, 110,000 followers between Facebook and my Facebook group page and group. 
uh, but it doesn't show to everyone. That's that's the cheeky part of uh, of uh, Facebook. Like if you have uh, five thousand friends, you only get ten likes for every post. That is what Facebook does. It only shows to twenty people, and then you get like ten likes. But five thousand is just for namesake. It's actually no factor at all. So I came up with this uh, Facebook, uh, sorry, Telegram group. So here you see this 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 feature here, pin message. Here is where you can get most of the resources. So if you can click clicking. You can find resources like this. So this is the direct link to the class, problem statement class. Um, if you keep clicking, you'll get new things. Uh, seven research gaps. What are the research gaps? Uh, and so on and so forth. So today we are going to make use of problem statement template. So I'm going to type problem statement. Um, this is the problem statement template is here. Okay, so I'm going to tag this. We're going to make use of this today. Then we are also going to make use of uh, literature review statistics. Okay, statistic statistics. Okay, so um, okay, so this one. Um, okay, so this is literature review and background uh, writing for uh, statistical information. This is the template. Then we are also going to look at literature review summary. Okay, this is literature review summary. I'm going to share this template with you as well. These are all completely free. These are resources that I create so that students can make their life easier. Okay, so that they know exactly what to be done. Uh, so this is literature review summary chart. I'm going to share with you as well. And then um, literature review uh, system database. There is one more uh, literature review database. Okay, so database also. So when you do systematic review, it will be easy for you. So uh, literature review search databases. I'm going to share this with you as well today. Okay, all right. So if you have not joined the Telegram group, that's the first link. Click and join. You can download all these resources as we learn today. Okay. All right. So today we're going to cover thesis writing journey, planning, diving to sections, post thesis completion. Okay. Now coming back to all of you. Okay. Um, uh, just to understand the audience today, just to understand our participants today. At which stage of PhD or master's are you guys in? Starting stage, proposal stage, or thesis stage? And then, if you're an academician, just say I'm an academician. And what is your subject area? Just to understand the participants today. So you can answer by saying start proposal or thesis, whether PhD, what is subject area? And then if you're an academician, just say you're an academician. So all of you, please do respond in the chat box. And like I said, if you're doing anything else, Best thing, put your smartphone very far away. That is very distractive, all right? Doing propo proposal, PhD, correction, political communication, okay, very good, start, okay. Do mention your, your subject area as well, so that we can know uh, how widespread today's class is. Okay, a lot of proposal, quite a number of academicians. Thanks for joining, thanks for making time, uh, doctors and professors. Okay, some thesis. Wish you all the best for proposal defense. Okay. All right, fantastic. Um, Okay, very good. So let's get going. So we have a very good mix of social um, engineering, computer science, um, a lot of different areas. We have very good academicians joining us today as well. Okay, so let's get started. All right. So um, these are some of the important uh, phenomenologies, okay, phenomenologies that I really look into, uh, um, um, sort of behaviors that I, I, I adapted, I adopted that actually enabled me uh, to um, graduate before time. Okay, so graduate before time is not brand sake. Okay, it's not like uh, marketing sake. Okay, I don't market on graduate before time, graduate on time, and so on. Uh, some people do, but um, I don't want to stress people out because not everyone have the same circumstances. During my PhD, I had the opportunity to work fifteen to eight, fifteen to seventeen, sometimes even eighteen hours a day. Sometimes I don't even go back home. But not everyone can do that because I was single um, and I can live as however I seem fit. 
I can eat same pizza for two to three days, no problem. No one is going to ask me questions, but not everyone are the same. Mostly in Malaysia, a lot of people are married, have kids, have family, have responsibilities, have parents and so on. So I started my PhD very early. I started when I was only 23 because I never did my master's. So I skipped my master, went straight to it. Whether it's a good decision or bad decision, uh, it's definitely a, a mixed feeling. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't encourage to go to PhD without master's because you don't know anything about research. You sort of just deep dive into it. And in the UK, they don't give you any classes. In Malaysia, I would really, um, I really respect that we have research methodology class. We have all these classes and so on before we start our actual PhD journey. Whether it's effective or not, that is secondary story. Okay, but it's, at least we have that. But in, in, in the UK, it's totally up to you. You want to go to uh, classes, you can just go to any classes that is uh, being organized for masters or undergraduate, but it's not, it's not compulsory. So you don't even know which one to start, which one to go to. There is no guidance whatsoever. So you are just on your own, your supervisor, and it's between you and your supervisor only. So you just keep going. So, um, yeah, so these are the eight important uh, uh, behavioral and factors that I adopted that actually enabled me to finish my PhD before time, despite not having masters. Uh, and uh, why I had to rush through because my scholarship was only for three years. Okay, I had a tuition fee scholarship from the UK. Uh, I, I never had stipend. Okay, there was no uh, money for survival, so I had to do three part-time jobs. Yeah, I was collect I was collecting glass in a club. I was uh, working early morning in WH Smith. Okay, I was working as a cashier, and then I was a student assistant in in hostel, and then I was also teaching uh, undergraduate students and master students. I was teaching optical fiber communication and digital signal processing. Okay, so I was doing a lot of different things just to survive and do my PhD as well. It is a time that I will never want to go back. Okay, it is the toughest time in my entire life. All right, uh, nothing, nothing can can be as tough as that. Okay, honestly speaking. So that's why I understand when PhD students are struggling, when they're suffering, I can understand what kind of uh, what kind of uh, um, 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 uh, circumstances they will be in. So. How did I uh, work, work worked out? How did I work through the entire journey? My first principle, okay, ah, that is the right word, principles. My first principle, there is no quitting. There is no way out, all right? Once you get into it, master's or PhD, no matter how tough it is, it takes you 10 years, 3 years, 5 years, 6 years, finish it, okay? But one thing I would advise, the sooner you complete, the sooner you sacrifice your holidays, your break, your, your, you have to sacrifice a bit of mental health also. I have to, there is no work-life balance. If you understand all of that, okay, if you understand the reality, all right, reality, um, you will um, um, get into it, okay? Because once you understand there is no way out, it's like a prison cell, okay? You're already into it. You have to serve your sentence. You have to serve it properly. You have to serve it. Prison sentence is a far-fetched, okay? It's not that kind of suffering. We are doing this for our life. But in a way, we can relate sometimes, okay? Uh, because um, if you know there is way out, you will take it easy. You know, one day if I don't make it, I'll just quit and go. It doesn't really matter and so on. Don't do that. If you're into it, fight it through, push it through. Um, imagine as a prison sentence, the better behavior, the harder you work in, a, in a, this one and so on, the sooner you can get out of it. That's what I did. Okay, I wanted to get out of, of that entire life, okay? Working 17, 18 hours a day, I lost 25 kilos, literally without dieting, because you have no mood to eat. I was only eating food from Iceland. So for those who have studied in the UK or went to the UK, you know what is Iceland. Completely frozen food only, okay? Very little money to survive, no, no people to support next to you. If you fall sick, you're on your own. Whatever it is, you are entirely on your own, okay? So um, I agree with Siti, the sooner you complete, the sooner you sacrifice your holiday, yes. Honestly, I can tell you, during my, my, my three years of PhD journey, two, and, two years and 11 months, okay, I never, I only went once to London, okay, from Newcastle, I only went once to London, and that trip, I went to London, Bristol, and I went to, uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, southern part. I forgot the name. Uh, Dover. Dover, is it? Dover. I think Dover. I only went once. Huh? I never been to Paris. I, never, I was right next door to Amsterdam. Just a ferry ride. I never went. There is no time. There is no money. There is no time. I was just chasing towards it. So only after my PhD, when I got a job as postdoc, okay, even before I completed my PhD, I already got my, my postdoc job. 
Okay. Uh, so um, uh, as soon as I submit my thesis, I took a train. I went to Birmingham. I started my work. Okay. Uh, so only after that, my parents came came to the UK, and only then I had my holiday. Okay. The only then I actually went to Paris. I went to Edinburgh, and I, Newcastle was very close to Edinburgh. Even Edinburgh, I never went to. So a lot of people ask me, where you went in the UK? Where where did you go and travel? Nowhere. Okay. Until I I, I went, earned my money, I did my job. Only after that, I started traveling. Okay. And one actually, as a matter of fact, I started more traveling once I came back to Malaysia. Okay. That's when I started traveling more. I had more time. Okay. So um, why I'm sharing this with you? I have this is the reality. No matter what you think, no matter how people tell you sweet things about PhD, it's going to be tough. It is, okay, I shouldn't say this, it is going to be kind of a uh, um, um, uh, uh, very, very tough journey. So you have to be prepared for that. But once you finish it, it is a big relief. And this is something they can never, money they can take away from you, whatever else they can take away from you, but your education, your PhD, they can never take it away from you. Okay, so it's your biggest asset in your life. Some people don't know how to make use of that asset. Okay, uh, so if you're working towards it, these are the, uh, so first thing, quitting, no way. Don't even think about it, no matter how long it takes. I've worked with clients who are into their PhD 14 years stuck, don't know which way to go really. They, I really have no clue. I managed to get them to graduate. Okay, finally, I was very happy that they could graduate. Dr. Tahira from UITM Joho, okay, uh, your colleagues, uh, your colleague, also 10 years. Okay, she was literally crying to me. She don't know what to do after that. Also graduated last year, March, which I'm very, very happy. So how to get that going? How to actually fight against time? Focus on, focus on writing. You can never stop writing. PhD and writing is like your, your head and your body. If you don't do one, when you're doing the other, it won't work together. It's, it should be in your DNA. Whether you're writing literature, whether you're summarizing a paper, whether you're writing a chapter, you're writing a section, you are just writing a paper, you're writing introduction, or you're just looking at a paper and paraphrasing, doesn't matter. Because whatever you are writing, you can just copy and paste later when you're forming a proposal or thesis. Okay, that is what you need to understand and remember. So focus on writing every day. Every day you must, when you're reading a paper, summarize immediately. Why are you just reading only? If you know that is going to be your literature, it's part of your, your thesis or proposal, summarize immediately. Why do you wait? So that's why I have this, uh, this particular document here. Okay, this one I'll be sharing later, but let me just uh, uh, share it now also. So this, this particular uh, uh, um, template that I created. Okay, so this one is a very, very important template. Um, I've already done an example. I'll be sharing about this later. Uh, but if you want to download, you can go and download now. Uh, this is the um, Telegram group link. So when you're reading, don't just read. And if you're not sure what to summarize, I've already created a standard. So you have title, authors, introduction, theory, variables, or solution. If you have theory, then you can write down theory, methodology, analysis, findings, potential gap. Or a potential gap. So this is an example I've done already from this journal, International Journal of Information Management. I even state the impact factor here, 14.098. Okay, this, this journal, 14.098. Uh, then I told in the introduction, what is the paper working on? Theory, what, what is it working on? Resource-based view under the umbrella of competitive advantage. Variables, independent variable, dependent variable, mediating variables. Uh, methodology, what are the methodologies? Analysis, okay, this is the software used, this is what they have done. Findings, what are the findings, final findings? And then if you look at the potential gap, findings are limited to Turkey. Will it be the same in other parts of the world? Only a single respondent per company doesn't prove a collective feedback of the entire organization. So there is a methodological gap that you can definitely look into if you want to look into this study. Several other moderators can be implemented, such as firm culture, financial implication, and so on. Enterprise resource planning can be explored with the same mediator. So these are the gaps. So when you're writing literature review, when, when let's say you're working in this area, you're, you're citing this paper, you can write, okay, this paper had done by, uh, as reported by uh, um, uh, AS uh, IDNA, uh, they have done all this work and uh, they have found this result. But however, the limitations of this study is this, 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 literature review. This is called critical review. This is how you can criti critically review. You're seeing the shortcoming of these papers. When you say that, then you can gradually introduce your solution, what you're trying to do. That is all literature review about. When you look at a paper, you complain about the paper. 
When you complain about the paper, you start introducing a new solution. But you cannot complain about a paper if you don't understand the paper. As simple as that. So when you read a paper, I know I'm speaking to you, some of you, if you don't understand the paper, don't skip the paper. I know some of you do skip the paper. You know yourself, don't skip. The day you skip is the day that you're not learning. The day you skip, you're actually going farther away from your PhD. The day that you're breaking through what you don't understand is the day that you're going closer towards your PhD. Because you know why? You are learning new information. You're processing new information. Okay, if you, if you read a paper, if you understand the paper very quickly, this is my, 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 my theory, my fundamental. If you read a paper, you understand the paper very quickly, that means you don't learn anything. Simple. That is the, that is the bottom line. You don't learn anything because you can, you can understand it so quickly because you already know the paper very well. You know the subject area. What is there to learn? But when you explore a paper within your research scope, but you don't understand what is going on, you don't understand the framework, you don't understand the solution, that means this is something new. Maybe you can find a gap from this once you explore it. So you have to expand your horizon. Don't be in your comfort zone. PhD is not about being in your comfort zone. If you want to be in your comfort zone, PhD is not the right thing for you. I can tell you that for sure. You have to get out of your comfort zone. Don't skip papers if you don't understand. Okay? <laughs> All right. Why impact factor is important? Because impact factor shows the quality of the paper. All right. When you put in your citation list, experienced examiners, experienced reviewers, when they look at your citation, they will respect your paper. They will know this paper is very high impact factor, very strong papers. If this student built a problem statement, a research gap based on these papers, this should be a solid study. If you go and cite a paper from ERA, from non-index journals, from Scopus Q3, Q4, you know, and then you build a problem statement, a, a, a research gap based on that, it's not wrong. Perception. Okay, humans live based on perception, right? How we perceive a study. When how you perceive a study, you look at references, look at the quality. Yeah, very high impact factor, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. Then yes, all right? Uh, yeah, you can download it here, uh, Azwati. You can download it here, all right? So you just go here, you click here, you see here, oh, a lot of members already joined. Okay, so if you go here, just click here, literature review summary, Click this, and you can just download and use. So these things, if you download, if you are sharing on Facebook or something, feel free, but make sure you acknowledge proofing by UK PhD or myself, all right? Because a lot of people are plagiarizing these things. They remove everything. I already reported many times. Uh, a lot of people just, just, just copy the whole thing, but no problem. You can use it, okay? But we have the copyright. You can use it. Uh, but if you share, make sure you acknowledge us, all right? Okay? And this is another checklist as well, critical literature review checklist. We'll come to this later. All right, so um, the uh, Telegram link is right up there in the chat box. Okay. Uh, Hasbullah, now, now, now I realize why. I could, yes, we love complaining because literature review itself is complaining. Then I already told you how to read and be absolutely critical. I already showed you how to be critical. Read a lot of theses. Why a lot of theses? Why read a lot of theses? Because if you're going to build a thesis, what is better than reading other people's thesis? Then you know exactly what you're going to build, what you're getting into. Yes, you familiarize. That's a very good word. You familiarize. You build a table of content based on other people's thesis. You're not copying. It's not wrong. I, I recently wrote an article in, in, in Sun newspaper. I also shared on Facebook. Uh, plagiarism is not the same between undergraduate students and postgraduate students. This is something I'm establishing with a lot of universities as well. Research is incremental. Okay, they are not creating new particles. You're not working in CERN. Okay, you're not working in CERN in the border of France and Switzerland and, you know, every day do a, a, a hydrogen collider and, you know, we, we create new particles. No, okay, we're not cre creating new bosons and so on. We are doing incremental research. Most to most new theory in HR, new variable in HR, new chemical study, new engineering study, incremental. So there will be tendency for you to plagiarize. But when you plagiarize, rewrite to your own understanding. Don't go and copy results, okay? So reading thesis is perfectly natural because then you can understand what you need to do, right? And when you're doing all these four, when you're doing all these three things, don't forget about novelty. That's what you're fighting towards. That's what you want. You don't get it some most of the time because you don't go out of your comfort zone. When you read paper, you don't understand. You need to go multi-layer reading. 
We read something, you don't understand that particular keyword, that but let's say they talk about example, sampling size. You don't know how they came up with the sampling size. Well, go back to the fundamentals of how sampling sizes are done. Go and read from methodology related book. See how they come up with sampling size. Then if you don't understand the next part, the statistical calculation of the equation, go to the equation part. Try to understand that. Once you understand all this, when you go for your viva, when they ask you sample size, you can explain. I went to this, I read this, I read this formula, I came up with this sample size. This is how you do it. That's what makes you subject matter expert. That's what makes you PhD worthy. All right. But, but, but you need to spend that time. That's where it takes a lot of time. That's where, that's where you really have to sacrifice your social life, your time. It goes without saying, okay. You, whether you do it in five years or eight years or nine years, you somehow will sacrifice. But the lesser you sacrifice, the longer it's going to take, the more pain you're going to have. Okay, at the back of your head, it's always going to go on. I haven't finished my PhD. I haven't finished my PhD. I haven't finished my PhD. It's going to keep ringing in your head. All right, it's a very bad stress to go through that. Might as well you take all the pain, absorb it and try to finish it in the stipulated time before time, on time, or after time, whether three and a half years or four years, try to not go more than five years. Okay, if you can GOT, your, your university is encouraging GOT, good, try. If your university is not encouraging, like some universities, they don't encourage you uh, GOT. They're like, I don't care. My students can take their time. Fantastic, take, but don't go more than five years. Why? Because your supervisor also will lose their mood. You also will lose your mood. It's very hard to, to, to keep that motivation going after five years. It's a very long time, all right? And publish, 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 and publish. Okay, in my PhD, within that short period of time, two years and 11 months, I published 10 papers and two were under review. Okay, uh, as soon as I said, I think if I'm not mistaken, when I went started my work, the, the rest of the two papers were published already. Why? That is the requirement of my supervisor. In the UK, especially my university, I don't know about other universities, there is no, I think even other universities are the same, there is no requirement to publish. They don't tell you, you must have two scopus, two ISI, three ISI, two, three scopus. No, there, the supervisor rules. My supervisor ruling was 10 papers. You have 10 papers, you because I asked him, when do I know I finish my PhD? When you have 10 papers, you come and talk to me about finishing a thesis. If you don't have, don't bother coming and seeing me. That was his, rule, his rules, very simple. Okay, so I had to work towards it, but it was good. That's what made me an, a publication expert. So now I can tell you exactly what to do, how to do, which journal to go, how to publish, what to get through, how to talk to editors, how to respond to reviewers' comments. All of that is because my supervisor squeezed everything out of me. Okay. Then I went for my postdoc. Oh, that guy is even worse, Professor Andrew Ellis. I still remember him. I think he has about 20,000 citations now. Very, very uh, top guy in my area. Lah. That guy is even worse. He wants 20 publications before he's student and graduate. So this is how they, they develop their students, okay? Crazy, right? Crazy. So this one, I don't tell you to publish 10. I don't tell you to do that, okay? Um, um, if you want to, you can. Some people are doing it. If you can, you do. If you can't, it's okay. Just do what is required for your university. If you can go more, you go. It's up to you and your supervisor. I am no one to come and, you know, judge you or tell you what to do. But if you can do more, you do because... That is a factor that is going, if you're already in a, in a government, government job or private sector, you're just doing it for the sake of a career and so on, up to you, all right? You do what is required, you graduate, then you move on with your life. But if you're going to become an academician, you're already in academics, you are you know, starting up your career, publish a lot. It will help you a lot in the long run, okay? Don't depend on supervisor. Why do I say this? Not in a negative connotation. I respect supervisors a lot. As a matter of fact, I work very closely with many supervisors in Malaysia. Uh, don't depend on supervisors because the day that you understand PhD is an, sorry, PhD is an adult learning, uh, uh, um, adult learning uh, um, uh, um, uh, studies, adult learning uh, degree, that's the day you will realize that you're on your own. I went into my PhD first three months. I only complained about my supervisor. I complained, 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 complained. Why is this guy not seeing me? Why is he not telling me what to do? Why is he not guiding me? Da, 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 da. Then my, my, one of my friends, his name is Dr. Balaji. He's a, he's a, he's a senior lecturer in Coventry University now. Um, so he told me, what are you going to get by complaining? I told him nothing. Uh, then why are you complaining? Uh, I said, because I'm very depressed. I don't know what to do. He said, that's PhD. You are in it. Your supervisor is not going to help you. You know that very well. What are you going to do? 
I say, well, I have to work on my own. That is PhD. You cannot blame me. It is PhD. You have to do everything. Same like working in a company, right? So you don't go in every day, see your manager, tell me what to do today. Tell me what to do today. Tell me what to do today. No, you're on your own. You do your work. If you don't know, you go for training. If you don't know, you may ask. But not every day, not every time you expect that. Okay, so same thing here. You are an adult learning already. It's no more undergraduate studies. The day that you realize you are the driver, you are driving everything, that's the day you will start moving fast. Okay? And don't be shy to ask questions, to ask for help. Go to research gate. Ask for help. If you want to understand something you don't understand, you want a quick answer, which is not wrong. Okay, which is not wrong. Go and ask questions, research gate. You can always come to my group, Effective Academic Writing. You can raise questions. I'll approve your post. As long as it's not promotional post, a genuine question you have, we have more than 55, 56,000 members. Ask your question. Anyone willing to ask, answer, they'll answer. My Telegram group, almost 10,000 members all over the world. They can help you if they want to. Ask the question. If you get, you get. You don't get, it's okay. No harm asking, right? Uh, Nazwan, what is the depth of knowledge? Can help to give an example. Surface versus depth. Okay. Um, very hard to say. Okay. Uh, if you ask me, if you read something, example, um, um, let's say methodology. Uh, let's go back to the sampling size example. You're looking at sampling size. Some people take 300 samples. Some people take 200 samples. What we normally do? The guy take 300 samples. Okay, lah. This guy take 200 samples. Okay. 100 samples. Okay. But do you know why? Do you know why? Do you know why he took 300 samples? He might say, oh, because this hospital, this hospital, this hospital got, got uh, as, let's say hospitals, la, got 100, 100, 100, so I took 300. Is it correct? Is that the right way to do? Once you go dig further, you see, you go to the formulation of statistical calculation, how they calculate from central limit theorem. They calculate, this is the sample size. This is how you must calculate sample size. You put all the equation in, then you find the number that that is wrong. That is not right. That is what we call depth knowledge forever you'll have that knowledge when people tell you i must when the reviewer tell you when you okay with this knowledge you're writing a journal you are selecting 150 samples the reviewer come and tell no why you never take thousand samples you can take the equation put it there solve in a review response and show this is 150 uh, sample is enough look at this theorem it's enough why should i go for thousand that's where you shut them that is what makes your subject matter expert so how deep you want to go in understanding some people go very deep. Some people don't go. Where they get stuck, they do not respond because they don't never go deep. Okay? That is the difference. All right? So, now, this is how, this is what I've created. Okay? I've gone so deep into PhD studies. Okay? I, 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 I was a telecommunication guy, a physics and telecommunication guy, but now I'm an education guy. So, I went, so I wanted to make things easier. The biggest problem a lot of PhD students have is, when do I finish? What do I do next? My supervisor doesn't tell me what do I do next. Uh, do I go and collect data? Do I, uh, is my proposal okay? Then what I did during MCO, thanks to MCO, uh, I came up with this diagram. Okay, this diagram as we speak now is being, I already trained uh, supervisors in USIM, University of Science in Malaysia, uh, right before Raya, 27th of April, I think. I trained about 30 supervisors, new supervisors to start using this, follow this method. So I have formulated, 11 simple steps to get you from point A to point B. I've already split, if you look at this, into proposal and thesis. All right. So uh, even this is also applicable for masters. Huh? So don't worry. Masters and PhD, the only difference is, let's say this is the ocean. This is the ocean sea. This is a seabed. Okay. Uh, we have something like that. All right. Masters, usually you'll go snorkeling. Okay, on the surface, you'll see inside. Okay, just on the surface. PhD, you go scuba diving. <laughs> That's the easiest way I can explain to you. You go further, deeper. It can be same topic, but it's the depthness and the speciality. How deep do you go? So, the process is, is the same, but the time length is different. Because you go surface, one go deeper. All right? So, now, coming back to this. Proposal got six steps. Always, when you start, start with step number one. 10 pages proposal. Anyone new PhDs here, start with 10 pages proposal. Why? Because you want to inform your supervisor what you intend to do. All right? Yeah, just don't get stuck. I want standard. You'll definitely get stuck anyway. <laughs> uh, what is important is 
you need to inform your supervisor. See, the most important person in your PhD is your supervisor. You can never change that. Whether you have coach, whether you come to me for consulting, you have external coaches like tuition and so on, doesn't really matter. End of the day, your supervisors are the most important people in your PhD or in your master's. The day that you realize that, your life will be easier. So don't go against your supervisor. This is my personal advice to you. Okay, um, Whether you like your supervisor or don't like your supervisor, that is secondary. Okay, You have to understand, student-supervisor relationship is a short-term marriage. Okay, Three years, four years, you are married together. You, have to, you are glued together. They like you or don't like you, you have to go chase after them. All right? Uh, short term only, right? Um, after then done, then you go on your own ways. You always have that respect. Once you finish, you always have that respect. Okay? So, before you start, tell your supervisor what you intend to do. Introduction, uh, um, introduction, um, uh, background, problem statement, RO, RQ, significance, literature, theory, uh, your solution, that means your framework, uh, and then your methodology. 10 pages. Go and show this is what I intend to do. If they don't like, scrap, write new 10 pages. It's easier because you know why? Rather than you scrap chapter 1 to 3, you rather scrap 10 pages. Because you know why? Chapter 1 to 3 is always in the range of 60 to 80 pages. You don't want to scrap that. You want to scrap something shorter. That's why I came up with a strategy, 10 pages first, then only chapters 1 to 3. So that's how normally I'll coach. Okay, My, my team will coach, lah, my, my, my consultants as well. All of us will follow this process. Whenever students come to us and ask us, okay, I'm stuck here, what do I do next? This is the first thing I'll show. Tell me where you are now. I'm here, okay. From here, this is what you need to do. Easy. Okay, so you, you are not all clouded. You clearly have a vision. This is what I do next. After you finish your proposal, last time I don't encourage proofreading here to save your money. Don't spend money. I think Gremly was, was, was enough for proposal. But nowadays it's a bit tough. I don't know about UT, UITM, but uh, many universities are uh, getting, uh, students are getting backfired because uh, the examiners are getting stricter. They want a clear language. They want clearly presented language. So I came up with proofreading process here before you proceed to proposal defense. Okay, proposal defense, mock defense is very important. Do your mock defense. Okay, so we also do our own mock defense for students that we coach. We, we we literally grill them like a chicken because we we want them to be excellent in proposal defense, okay? Because if you're not excellent here, you're going to get a lot of corrections here during defense correction, okay? See, proposal is one thing. They are not coming for your proposal. Remember that. They are not coming for a proposal. They are coming for you. You always think, I'm going to write a very good proposal. They are coming for this. If I don't know, I'll try to go a bit. No, it doesn't work that way. You cannot go ring. PhD, you cannot go ring. Okay, sorry if you don't understand what is go ring. You cannot, you call that, you cannot fry lah, okay? You cannot go ring. There is no way, okay? One way or another, the expert sitting on the other side will know that you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, within 20, 25 minutes, they will know that you don't know what you're talking about. So, make sure you know. If you don't know, say, I don't know. Okay, don't try to, you know, create up stories and so on. If you don't know, just gently say, I don't know that part. I'll definitely look into it. I'll come back to you. Okay, or I'll, I'll definitely look into it. I'll add it into my uh, thesis part later. Okay, don't go in. All right. So, um, so this is the entire journey. Then once you finish chapter one to three, here you have your journal extraction. This is the only diagram that has general extraction as well, okay, the entire process flow. What can you write here? Here you can write concept paper based on a chapter 1 to 3. We're going to talk about it more tomorrow. And then we can talk about SLR paper, systematic review. Okay, so systematic review specifically, we're going to talk in the third class. Okay, then you finish all these. Now we go to next part, This is part. For those who are here, Quickly finish your correction and move on. Don't take your sweet time. The longer you take, you have to understand, remember, your references will expire. Your references got, got expiry date. Huh? They usually go for less than five years. Some people go less than three years. By the time you start here, you get here late, four years, five years, a reference is expire, expiring already. You have to spend more time to replace the references, expand, write new references, read again, update. All that is going to waste your time. So the longer you take, you're going to add more work into your tasks. All right. Uh, Hasbula, how we count the number of words in a thesis? I don't know if you can count number of... Some universities, 
have word count. Uh, I'm not sure about UITM, but uh, I would say a good standard quantitative thesis, more than 200 pages. Qualitative sometimes can be more than 300. Engineering can be uh, sometimes between 100 and 200, sometimes more than 200. Uh, medical can be more than 200. Uh, this is the this is the right. I normally go based on page count. I don't go based on word count. Okay. So um, this part is done. Then you go and do your data collection. After data collection, you quickly finish your analysis chapters four and five. If you got six, seven, eight, you do so. Um, what you do here? This is the important step. Uh, step number nine. Chapter 1 to 5, Alignment uh, for Thesis. All right? So you pull the information here, you pull the information from here, you pull the information from here, you combine. Why this? This is your first proposal, this is your corrected proposal. Maybe you have some information from here you want to add back. And then analysis, you merge and start, uh, you, 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 you uh, develop your entire thesis. When you develop, you must expand, you must update references. Don't forget. Where to expand mostly literature review. Methodology, not so much. Your chapter one, you'll expand as well. You'll update as well. All right. Then once you finish expansion, you write two more journals here. We'll come to that in a while. This proofreading is compulsory. No escape route. Compulsory. All right. Minimum, you must allow your proofreader to have is one month. Minimum. Huh? If anyone can do a proofreading of a thesis less than one month, you are in trouble. That means they're not going to be bothered about your content. They're not going to be bothered about how your thesis emerges. If you're going to tell a, a, a zebra has a long neck, okay, compared to a giraffe, as long as it's grammatically correct, they are just going to leave the content there, right? That is not the kind of proofreader you want. You want a proofreader who understands your content. What you're doing is correct or not, makes sense or not. Not to correct your content, but to understand and make sure the language flow is there. That's why we need minimum one month not less than one month so plan in advance if anyone can say can they can do less than one month they are only doing it for the sake of money not for the sake of your phd all right so take care of that and finally mock viva very very important to do we also do a lot of mock viva lots of it actually all right remember for slides here and here 70 percent diagram 30 percent only words that's very, very important to follow, okay? Slides are, slides is not a thesis. It's more representation of how you understand things. Then go for your viva. Finally, you will have one more step here, which I never include, minor or major correction. Either way, doesn't matter whatever you get, as long as you get it. As long as you don't reviva, the rest can be solved, okay? So that's the entire process. These are all the timeline, all right, I've given here. You can look at the timeline, you can follow if you wish to, all right? But this is the timeline normally I follow when I coach. So that's why I give them, I give it as a guideline, okay? All right, so these are all the breakdown of timing, okay? Step one, 10 sections, three days per section. Step two, chapters one to three, 80 pages roughly, two months to write roughly 1.5 pages per day. So if you want timeline scale for you to follow very strictly, you can follow this. It might sound crazy, but PhD is crazy. If you don't want crazy, then you shouldn't be in PhD. PhD is crazy. You're part of crazy for at least three to four years. So this is the crazy part of it. Get into it. Be crazy. Okay. I was crazy during my, my, my three years tenure as a PhD student. I was crazy. I don't ever want to go back to that crazy life. Okay. If people come and tell me why you don't do second PhD. <laughs> Even MB or second PhD. No more study. I'm done. All right. I don't want to look at studying anymore but i study for my own knowledge now i study a lot every day i study i read new papers i still do huh? i do that but that is out of my interest because i invent new things i create new templates all right so that is my uh, new research okay definitely as well if it doesn't drive you crazy that means you're not doing it right that's how i will define it that's a very good thing to write actually let me write it down i when when sometimes i get this kind of idea i'll write it down crazy all right so crazy is right absolutely if you're not crazy something is wrong you can even ask your supervisors or they might agree with me okay depending on their journey my journey was crazy and i look at a lot of people they go crazy okay they get depressed they go crazy and so on it is part of the journey is it possible to follow step part-time basis student that's what i'm saying um if you can you follow or you can double up the time 
Okay, you can double up, you can expand, but make sure when you expand, you, let's say you got three months, but you want to spend uh, six months here, this one example, you do. Okay, but that means instead of three years, it will take about four to five years, which is fine, which is fine. I am giving the time scale to finish within three years. If you can, you follow, which some, for some people is impossible, I understand. Some of us have, uh, you know, kids, a lot of kids, some of us have uh, parents to take care, we have money to earn, we have crazy bosses, crazy work requirement, travel every day, and on top of that, come back, you are like dead meat already. And how am I going to manage all this? Well, it's not going to be easy. Okay, all right? Um, so, and then this rest of the steps, step 8, 9, 10, 11, how long you need to go through all this. Okay, all right? So, um, see if you can follow the time scale. Okay? All right, next thing. Um, I also observe a lot of people uh, uh, spending their time listening to a lot of people on Facebook, okay, like they go Facebook Live, they talk crap, okay, they, in the name of motivation and so on, they talk crap, you spending a lot of time there, those time you can actually spend, that's why when I go live, I don't talk crap, I don't give motivation, motivation, now I'm giving it to you, but what you need is information, knowledge, how do I do, how do I write problem statement, how do I literature review, how do I do literature matrix, how do I do a critical review, that is what you need, so go for those, Workshop, you think this thing can make it, make my life easier, certain professors are giving, go for it. Yes, you're spending money, but it's for your own self-learning. Okay, some people go for Udemy. I learn a lot of things from Udemy. Okay, not PhD, but other things, all right? But that's why I try to give Facebook live classes. I don't come and talk crap. Every day morning, I don't spend uh, afternoon or morning. I don't spend 30 minutes, 40 minutes, one hour wasting your time. If you're going for that, don't waste your time. Why? What for? Why you want to listen to someone motivating you every day? Is it working? Are you moving forward? Some of you, if you're attending, la. go for talks, workshop that is beneficial for you. See, you only have 24 hours a day. Eight hours, seven hours goes for sleeping. Rest of the time, you have to work, you have to eat, you have to take care of family, you have to earn money or traveling, drive, all these things. How much more time do you have for your PhD? And in that time, if you're going on Facebook Live and wasting your time and listening to people crapping about motivation, 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 what for? If you know the technique how to do PhD, you will do. So what you need to not grab is the technique. How do you do literature review? How do you write methodology? What is sampling size? What is framework? How do you form conceptual framework? What is variable? What is theory? Which theory to choose? choose? How, what is this chemical composition? How do I write a paper? How do I submit a paper? How do I write cover letter? That is what you need. Not motivation every day. So you need to define what you need. Okay? And this is a summary. Okay, I'm going to skip this because tomorrow I'm going to go through this in more detail for you guys. All right? Uh, okay, before you start writing you, to your supervisor, first thing you need to do is table of content. How many of you here actually do table of content? before you start writing? How many of you don't do? Very good. Okay, very, very good practice. Keep it up. For those who don't do, who don't know, do table of content. If you want example of table of content, go back to my... Uh, um, Okay, here. I already want, have one template. It is from Dr. Naeem's thesis, UMK. One of the best thesis that I've coached and worked on. Two years and seven months PhD, 16 publications. All right. Uh, I'll tag this also. You can have a look at the, at the table of content. If you see here, I've given an example. From the title, how do you design your table of content? So which part goes where, which part to start, which part to follow, and which part to come down. You can have a look at this. I've already tagged it. Okay, it's right there. Uh, you can go and download. Uh, if you, uh, how many of you haven't joined yet? Telegram group. If you need the link, let me know. I'll share again. All right. Okay. Next thing. Uh, very good. Next thing. Where do you get sample theses? How do you go and find these other databases? All right. See, like I said, you need information. You need information on how to access this thing, where to go and find these things, how to make your life easier. So, these are the links you can go and look for thesis. This is where you can look for papers. I already have a template on that as well for you to go and look for papers. And then mistakes to avoid. When you are reading, oh, okay. Uh, one moment. Uh, this is the link. As a matter of fact, I'll share all the links again. Okay. Uh, 
mistakes to avoid paraphrasing to out of context. Why? Why paraphrasing out of context is important? Because you read a lot and we tend to, excuse me, we tend to adapt and adopt, all right? Adapt and adopt, not plagiarizing, huh? it's different things. Adapt and adopt means you read something, you think this information is closely related to what you want, you read it, you understand it, you rewrite it to your own context. That means you add your own reference, you add your own information, you take the flavor. That means you take the recipe, you create your own menu. Okay? But while you're doing that, okay, we'll come to that paraphrasing part later. Now, what kind of papers do you read? Where do you read papers from? You can call it improvise, you can call it um, um, adaptation and adaptation as well. You can call it any way you want, but don't call it plagiarize. Because plagiarizing means you take it and you use it. And that is plagiarizing. Okay? Adaptation, adopt, uh, adopting, you take, you get the idea, you are writing to your own menu, your own flavor. Okay? These are some of the very good journals you can look at. I, I, I like this, these publishing companies. All right? Very good uh, for you to look at. All right? Okay. How many of you here? Uh, don't use Science Direct only. You can use any journals you want. As long as you know those are, start always from, see this is my, my reading flow. Always start from ISI, highest impact factor, go to lowest impact factor, okay, then go to Scopus, go from Q1 to Q4, you don't get, then you go to uh, ERA, you don't get, then only you go to none index. Always this is the process flow. Okay, Web of Science is the master of everything. Uh, if in case if you're in economics, business, and so on, you can also look at uh, uh, in parallel. You can also look at AB, AB, um, AB, ABDC. Okay, ABDC. All right. So these are the process flow in terms of reading. Okay, now coming back to dual screen workout. If you guys are not using dual screen, you are really wasting your time. I always emphasize on this. You are really wasting your time. Why? Because you might think, some people might say, I want to use split screen. Your life is already stressful. You want to look at the screen like this, okay, very small. Don't want, don't make your life tough. I'm not selling screen, by the way, disclaimer. Okay, these things you can get for 70, 80 bucks, okay, second hand. Life is already tough. If I can, I'll use three screens. I'm using two screen. If I can, I'll use three screens, okay. Extend your screen, put your paper here, reading right here. YouTube here, right here. News here, right here. Why? So that you can continuously work. Don't use single screen. Go today, go or this week, go and find how to use second screen. Either you can use VGA cable, HDMI cable, or DVI cable, or even uh, digital cable. Get a screen, connect to your laptop or PC. They'll definitely have a second port. Connect. If you have Samsung tablet or Apple tablet, you can also use that via uh, Wi-Fi connection. You can extend your screen also. Okay, so there are many ways you can do it now. More digital, right? So um, I would advise you to do so. Rather than you minimize, maximize, minimize, maximize, minimize, maximize, minimize, maximize all the time and torturing your life, use two screens. All right, you can always go quickly, download, do Google, Google Scholar search. You can look at the topic, what you want, search, search, search. You don't need to minimize, maximize. Yeah, and then blue screen. <laughs> okay, so you don't want that, all right? Okay. Quillbot. Okay, Quillbot, I need to share with all of you. I think probably some of you know this. Some of you probably haven't suffered yet. At least one to two cases in every other week I'll get. People get screwed over Quillbot because they don't know it's changing context. They might not know. Publication, a lot of thesis. This is mostly thesis. Okay. I've even seen Reviva before. Students failed because of Quillbot. They don't know they went out of context. All right. This is the original text from this student from USM. USM has the tendency to store thesis in repository. So you see, submit to the university, 100%. Not the student's mistake. So this is not a plagiarism. This is self-plagiarism. So he wants to extract paper. He extracted Quillbot. Everyone selling Quillbot, 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 Quillbot. Very cheap, 100 ringgit, 100 ringgit, 150 ringgit. So can paraphrase. Okay, problem solved. But they don't know the problem behind Quillbot. See, if Quillbot can synthesize billions hundreds of millions of technical words, can understand how humans are thinking, then they already replace human being ready. We won't be working in factory, we won't be going to work, they already replace ready, if Quillbot is that great. 
And if you think Quillbot is that great, do you think they're going to sell it to you for 100, 150 ringgit? Think about it. 100, 150 ringgit is the amount that you pay when you eat out in a restaurant nowadays. Okay, that expensive already. You think they're going to sell it to you for that price? If they have that kind of background, deep learning, uh, artificial intelligent engine running for that price? Cannot. They cannot make the money. They cannot even pay salary with that. Okay. So what they do is basically they use an algorithm called spin tax. They just spin, 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 spin. Okay. Like how do you spin your clothes? They just spin the sentence. And then you'll be wondering how come some of the words, technical words, Quillbot never replaced. Who marvelous Quillbot knows this is technical but never replaced. No, it doesn't replace because it's not programmed yet. It's not in the database for the flur to think that this one is a word where I can replace because the developer also don't know such word exists. If they know, they would have already incorporated that those words and already found a synonym. So it's not smart. It's just don't know. All right. So now if you look at this, let me give you an example. Red, total change of context, yellow, bad structure grammar. All this yellow color, bad structure grammar, never mind. Solvable. No problem. Easy thing. Red color, change of context is what I'm very, very afraid of. Okay. So if you look at this particular, this is the original sentence. Huh? TDMA scheduling schemes are very complex and mostly require centralized implementation and can potentially increase N dash 2 dash N latency. This is how you write N to N, huh? dash, dash words. Huh? Okay. So if you see the student very diligent, he cited everything. So he cite here, he cite here, he cite here, he cite here, cite here. But this word, he, this sentence, he never cite. Why? Because he said potentially. Look at the technicality, huh? because he said potentially. If you look at Abang Quillbot, what, 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 what Quillbot did, and requires centralized implementation often, and can theoretically, huh, potentially become theoretically, what it means? From something that might happen, it already changed the context that something already happened. Potentially means, don't know, yes, maybe, no, maybe, don't know, maybe yes, maybe no. That's why no citation. Theoretically means, it's already proven. There is a theoretical framework. That is proving that context. It is true. This paper was immediately rejected with no resubmission because of dishonesty. This sentence is totally technically wrong. And you see another worst part is Quillboard. It did is uh, wait, uh, it did is n dash two space dash space n. This is exactly what Quillboard did. Okay, this is a direct copy from Quillboard, huh? After Quillbot processing, la. you see here, yeah? and this is how you must write. Why Quillbot did this? Because Quillbot understands how Turnitin works. Turnitin works based on pattern recognition, correlation. All right? I know Turnitin very well because I, I know Turnitin guys very well. Okay, The regional office is in Melbourne. The, the, the our, our area region sales manager is in Indonesia. He's based there. Okay, I talk to them all the time. So N2 dash space dash space N means they already break the pattern they already break the correlation so quillbot won't be able to recognize this as plagiarism because this is considered one sentence this is one sentence already this is one word this is one word not one word together so when you go for proofreader when you go to reviewer when they look at it they will tell this is wrong combine back this is wrong they will know for sure 100 percent they will tell you so when you combine what happens it becomes plagiarism again this is how it's reducing it's digging your grave. This is just one sentence, just one phrase here only. Imagine all this. These are all out of context. All of this. Just within one paragraph. Huh? Be careful when you're using it. Okay. And the worst part is after doing all the damage, 100%, only went down to 61%. See, this is actual copy from Turn It In. Nothing to hide here. This is actual from Turn It In. And then, student gave up. No choice. I went to the base paper again. I paraphrased. Went to the original paper, paraphrased again. Single round, if you know how to paraphrase on your own, easily 20%. Without going out of context. Paper published already. If you don't want to spend others to do, learn yourself. Don't trust software. Grammarly is okay because Grammarly is not digging into your context. It's only suggesting you to change this, uh, this language. This flow is rewriting for you. You are risking your entire future, your entire hard work. Okay, It's like you're driving, uh, let's say you're driving a Mercedes-Benz BMW. And then you are giving to some 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 a bank on the roadside to repair your car. You don't know whether the floor know what is inside the car or don't know the sensors or not. Don't know anything. Just repair la. You will give uh, your car. Even new car Honda Toyota bring to service center only. You don't bring outside. 
because you care for the car. But this one, <laughs> but this one, you are giving your thesis, your life's work to a software which you don't know whether it works or not. You're going based on someone who told you for 100 ringgit and you're using it to, to rewrite it. Please do it. Please do it. It's a very big risk. Okay? Just do it yourself. Okay? <laughs> yes, Pachuka. All right? So, uh, this I'm going to skip. Okay, let's come to writing part. Okay. This is abstract writing. Okay, I already split into a uh, step base. Okay, this one already template base ready. Lah. This is five steps. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. Okay, step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. But this is not suitable for thesis. This is suitable for journal. So this one I'll explain more on tomorrow for journal. How about thesis? You might ask. Well, thesis already shared. This is this is uh, this this is temp uh, template abstract here. Let me tag it also. So seven steps. This is proposal abstract template. Simple seven steps process processes. Okay. So step one background intro. Step two problem. Step three what is the research. Step four methodology. How did you do it? Step five results findings. Step six further justification. Step seven achievement. Why the study is great. Okay, so this one is from actual thesis from MMU that I coached. Uh, you already graduated already. So that's why I took it as an example to show you. It's a small, medium enterprise topic. Very, 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 very important uh, way of writing abstract. Abstract is the trailer of the film. When you watch a film, right, no matter what film you want to watch, English film, ke, uh, Malay film, ke, Indian film, ke, whatever film you want to watch, what, what we normally do before you go to cinema, we watch trailer. When you watch trailer, you know this film, want to see or not. You know, this is the trailer. Okay, abstract is the trailer of a film. If you want your people to respect your thesis, write your abstract properly. Very, very crucial. Okay, you must, that's why I have achievement. Achievement shows how awesome is your thesis. Alright, so you can, you, again, you can use the template. It's right here. PDF is here. Let me just tag that also. You can download, make use of it. Again, if you use, if you share on Facebook or anywhere, please acknowledge. Alright. Okay, so that is that. So, uh, chapter one. Okay, chapter one, all these sections I've already made into video. Okay, I've already upgraded like, from the time I created slides. I already went on to do videos also. So, if you go back to my playlist right here, you can just watch these videos. These two. Chapter on introduction writing, chapter on background writing. These two will explain your entire process and then problem statement all here all right so background introduce your audience your subject introduce some statistics or how important is topic why statistics statistics are very very important to define the motivation behind your study but where do you go and find the numbers Okay, statistics saying that, okay, small, medium enterprise got this many percentage already bankrupt, already this many percentages are doing very well, or COVID, this many percentage already went down, so we are not in a pandemic anymore. You know, these are all numbers you need to use to justify, no matter what study you do, engineering, medical, whatever, you need to use statistical information to build the case in your background. So that's why I came up with this. Uh... I already tagged earlier, if you're writing, yep, I think it's this, yeah, this one, okay. So here, if you see, literature review and background writing, key statistics and data banks, all right. Highly reliable and precise sources, visit below links, get essential data and stats to support your ideas, start implementing those numbers and build a motivation for your study. Based on the motivation, you can build problem statement, literature review. So word of meter, our world in data, OECD. Diploma Statistics, Statista, Data Bank, European Data Portal, UN Data, WHO, SNJ, McKenzie. These are all the links for you to go and visit and get the information. So, uh, where is the PDF file? Huh? PDF file should be somewhere here. There you go. Okay. So, that is the PDF file for you. You may go and download. All right. Okay. Then come to minor literature review. I already told you how to do literature review part earlier. This is the literature review before problem statement. Your part of your background. Lah. There will be a literature review there as well. But this literature review is driving towards the solution. Your literature review chapter 2 is driving into the solution. Okay. Two different things. Huh? Okay. So if this is your solution. Okay. If this is what you are looking into. Literature review goes inside. 
background goes towards. Okay, this is the path going towards it. In literature review, you go in deeper. If you want to understand how you mind map this information, this is how the process flow is. Okay, all right. So far, everyone can understand because I'm going a bit fast. We already learned 42, but we started a bit late. Lah. All right, so um, everyone can understand so far. Any particular question you want to ask? All right, I take the long silence as all good. Okay, fantastic. Then goes to problem statement. Okay, problem statement I have, I think, more than four or five classes. The most recent one is the one I focused on problem statement template it's right oh i haven't added to the playlist yet okay so what you can do is you can go to my facebook page and it's right here okay so this is problem statement in seven steps all right i already explained basically this uh where is it problem statement latest template not this uh, this one okay so this one, if you look at this, let me open this. Huh? This is a PDF file. Okay, I already segregated problem statement into paragraph and steps. So paragraph one, this is a thesis from UUM, um, graduated last year, November. Also, this is I coached. So I, whichever I coach, I know the thesis very well. So I take it as an example. This is from education uh, PhD. I have one more environmental. I'll do more soon when I find time. If you see, I already split it into even paragraph level because problem statement must have par paragraph, right? But sometimes you wonder which one goes into which paragraph. How do you structure? So structures I've given already. Paragraph one, step one, reintroduce why you're doing the research. Okay, so this is an example from the thesis. Then you go to uh, paragraph, okay, step two. Okay, I'm not going to explain more on this. If you want, you go and watch that video. Let, let us focus on other things. Step two. This is step three, step four, step five, step six, step seven, and done. All right. So I've already given you what you exactly need to fill up. All right. It's already to this minute level of information. It's your effort after this, how you're going to use the information to process it. First, you don't know how to write pronoun statement. Next, you learn how to write pronoun statement. Now, I've already given you template of write pronoun statement. Beyond this, you need to start driving already. Okay. I receive from uh, review from comment from reviewer DRP. My problem statement is too long. I'm doing my problem statement by referring my RO1, RO21 problem statement. Yes, you can do that also. They go by RQ. But sometimes that can be long. It'll be like three pages, sometimes four pages, and so on. Uh, but the style, the template style I've given, not following any objective and so on, because objective only comes later. So um, what I'm doing is based on the study itself. Yeah, see, six pages. RQ base can go very long. Okay, so if you guys, uh, so what you can do a city, you can look at the template, maybe you can change the style. The information are all there. Luckily, you have six pages. Easy to copy and paste and just transform and see how it goes. Okay, all right. So for those who still haven't joined the Telegram group, I suggest you to join, go and download. All right. Okay, next thing, solution. How you describe your solution. And then from there, how do you go to? Your objective and research questions. Also, that one also we have class here. I have I have it here, uh, right here. If you go to um, the playlist again, okay, here you will see um, chapter one, chapter one, problem statement, problem statement, problem statement, problem statement, and then here you see research objectives from problem statement. This is that class. How do you actually define these objectives? Okay. Okay, so those these are two important videos you need to watch out of this to learn. All right, next part. Okay, I already explained this to you, seven steps problem statement. I'm not going to go detail into it. You know where to download. You know which video to watch, one hour video only, to go deeper into how to write problem statement. Okay, so let's skip that. Okay, inspirations from our PhDs. Again, I want to emphasize, some can graduate before time. Some graduate on time, some graduate after time, but doesn't really matter. My priority, my emphasis, always finish it. That is the most important part. Okay, Dr. Zayed here from Iraq. He was a last year UTM student of the year. I, I had the pleasure of working on his thesis as well. Okay, and all these, I think he got 11, 14 papers. Uh, 4 ISIQ1, 3 ISIQ2, uh, 4 ISIQ3, and uh, 2 ISIQ4, and rest conferences. Because all the papers, uh, we worked proofing, paraphrasing, and certain part we coached as well. Okay, 
uh, thesis we coached as well. So this one, two years and six months thesis done. This one, almost four years. Okay, uh, he's, a, he's a civil engineer with IGM, uh, Dr. Lee Morui. Dr. Rosna from UNISA, now she's a senior lecturer in UKM, more than four years. This is from UITM. She is Dr. Tahira. I always speak about her. 10 years into a PhD. Finally finished last year, March. Okay. She was crying to me when she came and see me in November 2020. I still remember the date. So, um, the important factor is to drive and to go. Don't stop. Okay. But remember, sacrifices are important in your journey. Okay. So, graduate over time or graduate after time, doesn't matter. Anyone mocks you, leave them. Don't feel bad by looking at GOT, GBT. Take that as motivation. Okay, because everyone's journey are different. If everyone's journey is the same, they won't call it PhD. They'll call it undergraduate degree. Undergraduate degree all finish at the same time. One. But PhD is not. PhD is adult learning. Everyone have their own skill, their own situation, their own environment, their own journey. Not everyone are the same. Okay? Okay, literature review assessments, I have already summarized. This is what normally they will do. But I've summarized all of that into this, all right, into this. Um, no problem. Um, it's my pleasure, Hafiz and uh, Hashim, no problem. So, literature review, I've already summarized into critical literature review checklist. Okay, I already have a checklist here. If you want to know about behavior, how to read, this is the uh, breakdown, what you must read, how you must read. Do you read minimum one paper a day or at least three papers a week? Healthy literature review requires consistent reading. All these are information for you. And then how you read a paper, flow of reading. From there, how do you do critical review? What it means to do critical review. Okay, so this one you can download from, uh, let me see where I have it. Uh, uh, where was it? It is template, uh, not this, problem statement, no. Literature review summary. It's next to each other, actually. Let me see if I... Eh? Okay, never mind. Let me just uh, look for it again. Checklist, checklist, checklist. Uh... Ah, there you go. Okay, so this is the checklist. Also, I've given in word format so that you can tick. You can literally tick, all right? So that is that. You can download it from there and go through this when you're doing literature review. After, while you're doing literature review, use this one. I already explained to you. Use this uh, summary sheet. Again, you can download it from here. Click this. There, this is literature review summary. All right? Feel why this is important? Because when you download and you save, you feel very glorious. <laughs> okay? You keep saving, 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 saving. End up, you'll have 100 papers, probably only read 5. You have 95 papers, haven't read that. How many of you are having the same problem? <laughs> this is the truth. All right? Save, 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 save. You feel very nice because when you find the paper and so on. But what happens is, when you save and save and save, you don't read. All right? You don't read. End up, after 3 months or 2 months or even 1 month, you'll download the same paper again, same paper again, same paper again, same paper again. So what I would suggest is download. Don't save. When you don't save, you'll have the fear that you'll lose it. Don't save. Open immediately, okay, and use this summary and summarize the paper. And then together with the summary and the paper, save it together. When you save, 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 save for every paper, you can transform every summary into one line. Okay, every summary into one line. And you will start forming literature matrix, all right? That is the easiest way for you to do literature matrix. Uh, Kamarul, latex is important, or just use, uh, just use Microsoft Word. La. No. Some people want latex, but if you have the time to learn latex, you do. For me, during my time, they also talk about latex. Already 10 more, ten plus years, now people are still using MS Word. There's even have Overleaf. Now, Overleaf is a bit more easier. My days, they have to literally program it, not Overleaf. Overleaf is the easy version. It's GUI-based. But uh, my time, uh, let us have to program everything. People were doing it. I was not bothered because I want to emphasize more on PhD. Learning all, let us all not so important. So up to you, actually. All right. Uh, okay. So that is how you do literature matrix. Let's go to the next part. Okay. Blueprint to completion. 
how do I normally, uh, so I already explained the framework works. Then I have to, I also have to explain how do we normally coach and uh, consult students, okay? So coming to that, doesn't matter in which step, whether publication, whether proposal, whether thesis and so on, these are the three important uh, sectors we look at. We have split into modes. So this is mode one and mode two, this is mode three and mode four, okay? What are the differences? Okay, if you have someone already written, your proposal written, thesis written, paper written, you're not sure it's good or not. You're not sure, you're not getting the necessary comments, necessary review, necessary uh, feedback. So you're like, am I on the right track? Am I doing it right? And so on. So then these two would be very good for you. Content commenting, that means one of our, my consultants will look into it, will give you critical comments. Sometimes they'll vomit comments into your document. You will be very, very, very bad to see. Sometimes I feel very bad, but that is the best. Okay, we have to be brutal so that you will have a better uh, a viva or defense, all right, or publication. Once you go through that, uh, you'll be like, okay, I want to understand the comments better. Usually we'll do an online coaching to explain all the comments, all right? Now, that is for someone who already written. Now, for someone who just starting off, not sure how to go, the path is not clear, then mode three or mode four. Accelerated thesis consultancy, which is very comprehensive, or content editing for special cases, all right? So what are these? <clears throat> this is mode number three. We will build a frame. Okay, this are not only for students. Uh, in USIM, I even build this for supervisors, for supervisors to monitor the students to go through their guideline time plan, right? So what we normally do is we will put uh, sometimes week, sometimes students cannot follow weekly, they are busy, but we'll break down into sections. We'll put the hours required, when is the date. First, we will start with coaching. After coaching, we already tell you in advance what to expect. Then when we are coaching, we are studying with you, right? So whatever materials that we get, we will also share with you, literature material. And then what are the outcomes? Once you finish writing, then we'll give you all the critical comments for you to improve. So we'll be with you throughout the process. You'll be doing everything, okay? All right? So, uh, and then mode number four, content editing. Okay, so that's what normally we do in terms of uh, coaching, all right? Okay, so uh, next thing, result and discussion. How do you do result and discussion? Okay, result and discussion you can break into interpretations, declaring opinions, explaining effects of findings, making suggestions and predictions. What is interpretations? Not just writing down below a diagram, you know. Interpretations can be done on the diagram, on the result as well, like this. These are all interpretations. If you have a table with statistical data, you can always highlight certain important numbers that you want to discuss. On qualitative excerpts, you can always highlight certain phrases that you are you want to highlight. <coughs> and you declare opinions, you explain the effects of those important factors, and you make suggestions and predictions based on that. Discussion must answer research questions or research objectives, right? Justify why that event took place. Justification is very, very important in your writing. And if you can introduce some theories to justify those events, all right? So this is result and discussion part. Conclusion is nothing but highlighting your contributions, highlighting your impacts. Let me ask you guys, can you cite in conclusion? What do you guys think? In conclusion, can you add citations? Very good. We have two different opinions, okay? Okay, let's talk about best practice. A good practice is that you shouldn't cite in conclusion because you know why? When you're citing, that means you're sort of introducing new elements. You're discussing. That should be in discussion. Conclusion, you're ending. It should be about that long only for papers. For thesis, probably like half a page, one page is more than enough conclusion. Because you're concluding, you're telling end point, I'm done. This is what I've achieved. This is my highlight. This is my contribution and done. Finish, full stop. When you cite, that means new information is coming in. You are justifying. You are bringing in new uh, info. All those must be in discussion. That's why you have discussion. If you're overlapping into conclusion, then conclusion is becoming discussion. You're overlapping. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's not a good practice. Good practice, no citation conclusion. That is the right practice. Okay? All right? Okay. 25 steps to define your thesis. I'm not going to go through all 25 steps, but this is a very, very important class for you to go through. So far, many minor corrections after going through this class and also our mock defense or mock viva uh, coaching. 
but this one also very effective uh, this one i provided for free 25 common questions by dr tawa okay this is in my playlist i already shared my playlist earlier so in case if you are not sure of the playlist this is the playlist all right of all the classes you can also share with your friends feel free to share the link once you go down you can see okay this i'll share the slides with you also make sure you sign up and provide your your email huh? i'll email you the slides okay so this is question one to question seven this is question eight to question 16 this is question 17 to question 25 okay these are 25 questions you can go through before your proposal defense or viva very very effective you can sort of know already what you need to prepare for okay right all right okay once you complete the first draft of your thesis or proposal or even paper shut it down take a break refresh because you know why when you read it through again you'll be asking yourself who the hell wrote this many of them will ask the same question i ask myself as well okay you'll be asking yourself why who wrote this what rubbish is this okay when you don't <laughs> when you don't read through again and when you send your supervisor don't go and see your supervisor you confirm will get nuclear bombed all right all the time i could not be false so all right so my advice to you is shut down take a break go have whatever food you want to have go netflix relax go to cinema come back refresh press like reset button read again ah, then you'll find a lot of problems you need to do that process two to three times okay two to three times so that you don't get nuclear bomb by a supervisor okay don't assume your reader understands everything explain and be descriptive be descriptive huh? assume that they don't understand anything make sure the ideas are well structured in the paper avoid all over the place method that means your writing must be very structured like harry potter book the story must flow very nicely eight films harry for harry potter films if you even watch again you'll love it because of the story flow that's how your thesis or proposal or paper must be if it's all over the place people won't even cross introduction okay and your examiner is going to come to your viva and he's going to he or she going to destroy you all right assure that every paragraph have continuity avoid disconnected paragraphs this is important huh? not because we're doing proofreading we are already very busy I don't need to sell the service here, but this is important, okay? I cannot deny this uh, fact, all right? Get a solid editor to proof and edit your material. Get someone with experience in publishing, in writing pieces. When you go on Facebook, don't get carried away when people offer you very cheap price. Cheap doesn't mean good, all right? Especially in this case, all right? If people are very good, they know their value, they will normally charge higher. That's why Eddie Touch, American Journal Experts, all they charge 100 ringgit a page, 150 ringgit a page, Cambridge proofreading. You go and check their pricing. You'll get shock of your life. When people are charging 3 ringgit, 6 ringgit, 7 ringgit, 8 ringgit a page, you should wonder why so cheap. You should ask yourself, don't regret after giving your thesis. I've seen so many people burn money four times, five times, six times. They give up, then the supervisor will tell them, why you never go look for Dr. Tawa, go look for him. Then they'll come. Honestly, I'm not simply saying this. This is honest thing happened so many times many times so if you have money factor learn on your own to proofread grammarly is not enough i use grammarly i i i only suggest and talk about things that i, I have first-hand experience otherwise i won't share okay i'm using grammarly i like it surface okay i forget comma i forget full stop i forget sp uh, spacing nola i forget uh, to add the i forget to add a i forget to add n that is good structuring sentence editing on text editing no way no way it's good for a final check but sometimes grammarly is wrong also it's not always right okay after we finish proofreading people will check grammarly when they come back to us i'll tell why you then why you send to me do grammarly only lah because i guarantee it's correct i know grammarly is wrong not i do it i did it i along with my native editors we actually experiment like how we experiment quillboard we also experiment grammarly to see whether it's worthy or not because if it's replaced can re can be replaced it reduces my burden okay but it can't unfortunately okay so at surface level it's okay it's good i use it make my life easier but at the depth level no way not in this lifetime yet maybe another 20 years maybe all right okay so 
know your editor, know your proofreader because you're giving your lifetime of work to them. Same, go back to your car concept, your Honda, Toyota, your Mercedes, BMW. You don't give to someone on the roadside. You give to specialists. You go to their service center because you trust. You know these buggers won't screw up. Okay, so remember that very carefully. This is your lifetime of work. Okay? And this is very important. Don't submit to journal. Even if you come to me, we always ask you for information. Give me this information. I need to do certificate for you. I already built a tool to generate certificate because it's so important. Don't ever submit journal. Sometimes even I think certain universities already come up thesis also. They must have certificate. Don't submit without certificate. Okay, because even if you have proofread, you don't submit certificate, your name sounds Asian in general, they will ask you to go and proofread again. Happens so many times, all right? So that's why we put very strong endorsements, the amount of documents we have proofread, uh, our ISO standard, SFEP, HRDF, all of that standards we already put inside. Most of the journals know a certificate anyway, and this is free. No one should charge you for this certificate. It's like you're going for training, your certificate is free, right? This is also free and it's compulsory okay don't take uh, some certificate without any endorsement without actual number and submit they won't recognize it okay all right okay when do i proofread my thesis and avoid scammers education is one of the biggest white collar crime sector that is growing very fast thanks to freelancer.com uh, what is another thing uh, uh, upwork.com facebook instagram and so on every Every uh, uh, people who wants to make money, they know they can make quick money and run away. They are coming and doing that. Okay, so be very careful. When do I submit my thesis for proofreading? I am a person who always respects supervisory team. They must give the final go. Always respect them. Ask them. Okay, so once the entire supervisory committee agree on the content of a thesis, then only you must proofread. Because you know why? After proofreading, you shouldn't change. Your language is already everything polished ready. Okay, so again, go back to the, 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 the theology of your car. If you already polish everything, why you want to go and scratch back your car? Don't scratch back your car. Polish done, keep it nice. Maintain it. Same thing here. I already polish your thesis or proposal or paper. Leave it. But sometimes supervisor wants to read. They want to go one more time. It's fine. I'll tell you what to do next. Okay, but how if my SVs refuse to read my content because my language is poor? Happened before. Okay, so then no choice. You go ahead for complete proofreading, editing and structuring services. But after my SV check, they will change the content. I have to repay for proofreading. It's a very important question for you to ask. Huh? That depends on the proofreader, but proofreading by UK PhD only requires you to highlight the changes and will only be charged for the new parts, not for the whole thesis. Okay? We won't recharge for the whole document, proposal papers, the same. But don't change more than one time because that will defeat the whole purpose. It will it'll, it'll spoil the whole structuring part. Okay? How if my examiner still complains on the language? Huh? This is important. If your reviewer complain, examiner complain, what to do? I already spent two, three thousand to proofread, few hundred to proofread. A proofreader should provide language warranty. Okay, similar to any products or services sold, but please assure that no changes are made after a proofreading process. If there are changes, kindly highlight and revert back to the respective proofreader. Proofreading by UK PhD proudly and confidently provides language warranty. No time limit. As long as you don't, because some journals take two years to publish. Okay, some. So we don't give any time limit. But provided you don't make any changes from the original copy that we have done. Okay, because then we don't know the problem is from me or from you. So that's why we avoid that. Okay. Can I rush through my thesis proofread process? Thesis proposal around one month. Mini thesis especially minimum one month. Proposal around one month is fine. If anyone tell you can do within two weeks, within 10 days, within 15 days, within 20 days, 250 pages, even if they just read your thesis, will take them more than a week or 10 days. Just to read, huh, to understand. How can they proof it within two weeks? Think of it logically. Okay, Always go back to the logics. If they can read your thesis and proof it and edit and structure within two weeks, that means they're not bothered. They just da -da 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 -da, finish, take and go. Okay, all right, be careful of that. Don't waste your money. More important than money, don't risk your thesis. Okay, how your document must be after proofreading, many don't know what to expect. This is a very good systematic literature review paper. I'm sharing this on purpose. All right, uh, uh, 
um, uh, sorry, Sheila, in terms of pricing and so on, I would take it offline uh, to respect the session today. So this is the link. You can always WhatsApp me. All right. Okay. So uh, this is a great SLR to read. My personal favorite. Why my personal favorite? Because of the structure of the paper. Very, very, very well written. Dr. Kashif, he just graduated. He just finished his PhD. I like this paper because I know this paper because I personally paraphrase and proofread this paper. Uh, you can have a look at this paper in case if you want to download Impact Factor 3.824 ISI Q1. Okay. And this is how your paper must be after going through the whole due process. Okay. Okay. One more thing. Some of you might want to look for a thesis sample. Okay. You might be wondering, I want some thesis sample, but most universities in Malaysia are not online. How do I go about? Okay. Very simple. I have some thesis I've uploaded uh, for the sake of uh, students. You can go to more. In case if you miss out on my Facebook page link earlier, this is my Facebook page link. Okay. More, go to photos. All right. In the photos, you can see here um, uh, this one. Client thesis after our services. Okay. I already, these are all graduated already, yeah? but I only managed to do until 2020. Certain thesis only. I had no time for 2021, 2022. But I already put there the title, which university, which faculty. So if you're interested in this particular thesis, you can contact them. These are all graduated already. So there are quite a, quite a number of them here. Okay. So this is the link in case if you want to go directly there to check out the thesis. All right. Okay. So, and um, only part of my talk, I'll offer this promotion. Public, I don't offer anymore. As you can, if you're following me on Facebook, you will know. Ultimate thesis package up to 30% off proofreading, translation, and formatting services. Okay. Only for my uh, talks. One and only language warranty provider, okay, no, 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 no expiry whatsoever. And these are all our language services, proofreading, editing, structuring, paraphrasing, formatting, translation. Okay. All right. True transformation of a document. This is very important theory. Yeah? Good content, bad language. No one can understand or appreciate. No one. Okay. No one. Bad content, good language. Readers are happy, but no value because same content. Re reinventing the wheel. So you always need both good content and good language. Readers appreciate the value and also love to read. Okay. And okay, this one we're going to skip. Okay. I'm also going to share with you the sample thesis from Dr. Naim. He agreed to share. All right. He agreed to share. So I'm going to share with you the whole folder of notes uh, for tomorrow's class and today's class as well. Make sure you sign up uh, with your email address so that I can email all of you. All right. So uh, I think Dr. Ayn will share the link very shortly for you to sign up for the certificate. Make sure you stay, stay and sign up first. All right. Uh, and then uh, most importantly for July. Okay. We're almost done for July, June. I already shared the classes earlier for Facebook live. If you have any specific topics you want me to share with you, you want me to share on Facebook live free class. Don't worry. You can come and suggest. Okay. This is the suggestion box. All right. Uh, so I'm going to share uh, the link with you. One moment. Um, is it not suddenly going missing? Um, okay, here you go. Okay. So this is the opportunity for you to uh, review the talk today. Make sure you give five stars. If you're going to give me less than five stars, don't review. Don't click the link. You can still suggest to me. Just PM me on Telegram. PM me on Telegram. Tell me what class you would like to listen. I'll add into my list. All right. No, no problem. No harm done. But if you're clicking this link, make sure you click five star. Don't give me anything less than five star. And then the suggestion comment box down there, just write what classes you want next. Okay. All right. This is where we are located in Cyberjia. In case if you want to drop by, let me know earlier. Some of you might be from Perlis. You can always do online meeting. No problem. And this is our website. Okay. Proofreadingbyphd.com right here. You can have a look at the website. Okay, uh, uh, Miss City or Dr. City already shared uh, the link for you to sign up for certificate. Make sure you give your email address. And also, what do we do in terms of uh, consulting? How do we actually make it? What, what actually happens? Okay, not only for students, we also have academicians, professor from UM, professor Barakatun and a, a whole team from UPM and students. We do for everyone. Sometimes supervisors will bring the whole student team and come. Okay, there are a number of students and so on. So we work on publication content editing, thesis examiner response, PhD proposal consultancy, defense viva preparations, thesis to general conversion, data analysis interpretation. These are the six core areas that we normally work on. All right. So um, that is all for today. Thank you very much. We will have another class tomorrow. Make sure all of you come and attend. 
If you don't have the link yet, talk to the organizing committee, talk to Dr. Ayn. Please inform your friends. Tomorrow we have another class. Don't forget to come and join. Uh, in case you, uh, um, the link is given, again, look at the chat box, the form for you to fill up certificate. The link above uh, is the one for you to go and review. Lah. Okay, review. Make sure you give five star. Write down what you want for the next class. All right. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, you guys were great. Very good participants. Thanks for being very active. Uh, and uh, thanks for your time. Okay. Um, over to you, uh, Dr. Akmal. All right. Thank you, Dr. Tavamaran, for the speech. And that was oh, indeed no. a very compact, informative, interesting, and also stimulating session. And I believe all participants also got a lot of input from this session. So, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is now open for any questions. If you do have any questions, uh, because some of the questions have already answered, and uh, maybe one or two more questions from the participant, you can unmute the mic, the mic, and also turn on your camera, or also you can forward the inquiries in the chat box. If you do have any questions. Okay. Hi. Right. Hi, Miss Asia. How are you? Hi, good. Okay, uh, okay. Thank you so much for that very insightful session. No um, problem. I'm a newbie in this. My question when you were talking about Baiva and uh, proposal defense earlier on, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask a question, but someone came in, so I couldn't <laughs> interrupt. Mm -hmm. So, my question okay. is um, during the uh, Viva mm -hmm. session, mm -hmm. what do the, the they want to look at you as a candidate like your knowledge is in depth on that particular research that you have or they want to see you have this some sort of perimeter that that they want to test you on maybe in let's say if you're doing qualitative are, mm -hmm. are, are they focusing or expecting you to be focusing in depth that one particular for example case study or do mm -hmm. you want to see you showcases uh several skills of knowledge that you have about they they will normally test you they'll be like why do you do case study why you never do interview why you never do focus group why you never do quantity they'll ask you all those kind of questions mm -hmm. so when you narrow down the case study you must also do a justification why you choose case study whether mm -hmm. you write it in your thesis or not in your mind you must know that mm -hmm. uh, so right. you must be able to create a fencing okay a knowledge mm -hmm. fence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, surrounding whatever you know and then yeah. you must be able to defend that fence. So you must say, mm -hmm. I never do quantitative because of X, Y, Z. I never do focus group because X, Y, Z. Interview was not suitable. So I went into case study. And that's how you must explain. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. No problem. No worries. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So we have another one question from chat box. So okay. hey, doctor, I am from China. I am writing yeah. a paper in English. But most reference papers are written in Chinese, so I am quite confused. How to review the reliability of Chinese articles? Could you please give some advice? That is going to be tough. It's a very complicated problem that way. Normally, um, it's better if you can find uh, English-related papers. But if you go into traditional Chinese-related research, China, I mean Chinese studies and so on, uh, then uh, it's very tricky. You can try citing those papers. Okay, if uh, and check where these papers are indexed. Okay, is it ERA? Is it uh, Chinese? <clears throat> like Malaysia, we have my site. Maybe you have your own citation in China. Uh, you know all those kind of things. Maybe when the reviewer asks you to cite more reliable papers, you can always defend, saying that these papers are indexed in these databases. And my study is related to you know China related China context study. So this is the only literature that I have. You know so on so forth. You this this is all. Uh, these are all new things that you're venturing. There is no yes and no answer. You have to venture and try citing them and see how the responses are. Once you already have precedent, you already did it already, next time you can just cite the same source. Okay? All right. So there is no other question from the chat box. Mm -hmm. So, okay, please fill in your attendance. Huh? The form is given there. Uh, for your certificate, and also for me to send all the notes to you guys. All right. So then, uh, Doctor Ayn probably will share with me later. Okay. All right. So thank you once again for all the interesting questions from the participant and also answers from the Doctor Tavamaran. So, all right. So for today, for everyone's uh, information, today is 9th June, which is the birthday of our honourable speaker. So <laughs> before we bid farewell to each other, we would like to take this uh... opportunity. 
to wish the happiest birthday to our speaker, Dr. Happy Dr. birthday, Dr. T. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for remembering that. Thank you very much. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we should have like a surprise delivery to his office or something. Yeah, no worries, no worries. On that. Thank you so much. Take care, guys. Thank you. Have okay? a blast. Have a blast. Thank you. All right. So have a have a very good day. Thank you very much for the wishes. So I wish you guys all the best. Uh, so I'm still educating you guys despite being my birthday. So please take the notes very personally. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I uh, wish you all the best. Okay. All right. All right. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. See you all tomorrow. Bye bye. All right. All right. So once again, happy birthday to Dr. Tapamaran. Uh -huh. We wish you fulfilling life and many more years of joy, happiness, and success as you spread your knowledge. How many you. happy returns to you today, Dr. Tawa? Thank you very right. much. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Right. Thank you, Doc. Thanks, Dr. Ain. See you. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone. So before happy we. Birthday, Dr. Tawa. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ain. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, so I'll leave us, huh? Eh? All right, there. Bye. So for for all the participants, make sure to uh, uh, the link for the certificate of participation is not available in the chat box. So please provide necessary information to receive your e certificate. On behalf of our committee, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Tabamaran Kanisan for having us in this webinar, and also. Thank you to all participants. All right, so we will have a next series tomorrow. So hopefully uh, everyone uh, will have, uh, uh, will making time for tomorrow's session. All right, thank you for your time. Assalamualaikum and have a nice day. Thank you, organizer. Assalamualaikum. Bye-bye. Thank you.